making sure I was in the kitchen and I've just gotten a little prep work done. What I've done is I've taken two eggs and a cap full of Mexican vanilla and just like an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. I put them in this bowl and stirred them up. I'm just kind of beating them a little bit. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to come on over here and I have a, um, in this pot I've already put a cup of water, a third a cup of butter, two tablespoons of brown sugar, and I'm going to do about half a, half a teaspoon of salt. And as soon as this melts all together, I'm going to take it off the heat and I'm going to add one cup of flour. And then I'm just going to take that off the heat and I'm going to stir that together. Now before we can add the egg mixture to this, we have to let it cool down a little bit because otherwise, you know what happens to eggs when they get hot. They'll scramble and so then we'll have some kind of scrambled egg contraption and we don't want that. So we're just going to let this cool down just a little bit and then we're going to add our eggs to it. And you can see that's what it's looking like right now. It just kind of all comes together. If you look down in here, I've kind of separated the dough a little bit and I've made a little well and I'm going to pour my eggs down in the middle of it. Now you don't want to use a metal utensil when you do this. When you stir this, you want to make sure you use a wooden spoon because this will just, if there's any heat left on that, it's just going to make this utensil hot and then chances of scrambling are greater. So now I'm just going to stir that up really quickly. You want to move fast that this has a nice sheen to it. We're going to really quickly, I'm just going to add a little bit of orange zest. Now you want to make sure that when you add your orange zest that you don't rub all the way down to the white of the orange, but just lightly do just a little bit of orange zest in there. And then we're going to put it in our pastry bag. Now, if you don't have a pastry bag, you can use a gallon-sized Ziploc bag, and all you're going to do is cut the corner off of the bottom of the Ziploc bag. So I'm just going to cut this. This is my pastry bag. I've got a number 20 star tip, and you're definitely going to need to pick one of those up for yourself. So now I'm just going to squeeze that through, and actually, it looks like my hole needs to be a little bit bigger. There we go. Squeeze that through. And then I'm going to take the bag and I'm going to bend it over like this so that none of the yucky stuff gets on the outside of the bag. All the dough stays on the inside. And then I'm just going to start loading it into my bag. Okay, so I filled it up. I'm obviously going to have to fill more than once. But now I'm just going to close it and twist it. Now, I've got my heat over here on my fryer on 375 degrees. You want to make sure that's really, really hot. I'm going to drop my basket for my fryer down in because I don't want to like set my dough right onto the basket. But then when it's time to take it out and it's already fried up, then I can lift it out with the basket. The other thing is, is if you don't have a fryer, you can do this on the stove. Just put some, I use canola. You can just use some canola, fill up a frying pan with some canola, get the temperature up to 375. Best way to check that is use your thermometer and then, um, we'll get you to this step. So I'm just going to release these right in to the fryer and I'm just going to do a strip all the way across the length of the fryer. See how fun that is? And I'm just going to let that fry up until it's golden brown. And then we're going to take it out and put cinnamon sugar on it. And they are so good. Look at how chewy they are. Really, really good. Um, kind of having a crappy day. When we went for the little last break when I was doing the frying, I sat a plate on the stove and didn't realize I had left the stove on. And when I was over here putting these on the plate, all of a sudden, we had an explosion here in the kitchen. And I mean, literally, it sounded like our house exploded. And the plate exploded and broke the top of my stove. 
So let's just say the Mexican is not in a good mood right now, and neither am I. You have to see it though, you can't believe it. So uh, there may be a little delay if I don't find a stove for my cooking videos, and I apologize for that, but um, have a peek at my stove, you can't believe it. But the churros, the churros turned out great. So don't let that affect the video at all. The churros, good. Come on over here and see what happened. So like I said, when, when I was doing that lovely shot over here, after I was done, I thought I had turned the stove off, but clearly I did not turn the stove off, so it was on like four, not very high. And I set a plate when I was hurrying to come back and forth. I set a plate down over here. And then the next thing I know, I hear this explosion, and I was seriously only standing a few feet away. I'm lucky that I'm not with lacerations in the hospital right now. But the plate burst into a million pieces and flew all over the kitchen. And now my stove is just shattered, and it's only a year old, and we called the repair place, and they told us that they no longer carry that part, that it is discontinued. Lovely, lucky me. Anyway, so it's a lovely day here, as you can see, and why should I fake it? Why should I try to pretend like we're all in such a good mood? Anyway, so cheers with the churros, and hopefully we'll get this fixed and be making some videos soon. Bye-bye.